Hello, welcome to my channel, El Mundo Mágico de Miss Betty. Today I'm going to read to you The Lizard in the Sun by Alma Flor Ada, ilust illustrated by Felipe Dávalos. Do you, Kika, lover of legends and of the sun? The whole world knows that the sun comes out every day. Some days it shines brightly in a clear blue, blue sky. Other days clouds cover the sun and its light is much paler. When the clouds let loose their load of rain, the sun disappears behind a curtain of water. There are places where it snows. During, during a snowstorm, the sun also stays hidden. But, when, but even, even when clouds, rain, or snow hide the sun, we know that it's still there. The story I'm going to tell you happened a long, long time ago when the sun had already disappeared. It had been many days since the sun had come out. Everything was dark. All the plants, the animals, and the people were waiting anxiously for the sun to appear. But the sun did not come out, and everything remained in darkness. The people were cold, the birds had stopped singing, and the children had stopped playing. Everyone was worried and afraid, for this had never happened before. The animals decided to go out in search of the sun. The fish and the turtles looked in the rivers and lakes, but the sun was not there. The green frogs and the white mouth mounted toes, looked through all the puddles, but the sun was not there. The deer and the squirrels searched through the forest, but the sun was not there. The rabbits and the hares searched through the fields. The jaguar searched through the green jungle, where he lives, but the sun was nowhere to be found. The birds searched through the branches where they had made their nest, and the, majest the majestic eagle flew over the mountain tops and the cones of the volcanoes, but no one co could find the sun. And little by little, all the animals stopped looking, all of them except for the lizard. The lizard kept on looking for the sun. She climbed rocks, scurried up three trunks, and peer on their leaves, searching, always searching. Finally, one day, she saw something very strange. She was scampering over some rocks when she saw that one, one of them was shining as though it had a light inside. The lesser had seen many rocks in her life. She had seen rocks that were smooth and polished, and rocks that were rough and sharp. She had seen shiny gray rocks and dull dark ones, but she had never seen a rock that shone as much as this one did. It shone as brightly that it seemed to glow. So with great excitement, the lizard ran off the city to share her discovery. At last, the lizard reached the city. Even though there had been no sunlight for many days, the people had kept on working. The barges floated softly in the waters of, in the, waters of the lagoon, laden with fruits and flowers in the enormous marketplace. The vendors had laid out their wares on beautiful woven blankets. The pyramids of fruits and vegetables looked like tiny copies of the great stone pyramids that loom over the city. 
but without the sun's light, no one could see the brilliant colors of the peppers and tomatoes, the beautiful deep colors of the blankets and shawls. Instead, the flickering torches that led the marketplace cast deep shadows, and instead of cheerful bustle of people buying and selling the, and having a good time, there was, there was a murmur of worried voices wondering how long this endless night might last. The lizard did not stop looking at the barges or the market's wares. She did not stop to look at the silent crowd that walked through the plaza. Instead, she headed straight to the Grand Palace and did not stop until she was in front of the throne. Here, by the dim light of the torches, the lizard saw the great em emperor. He, rode, he wore sandals made of gold and a tall crown made of beautiful feathers. Sir, I have seen a rock which shone with a strange light, said the lizard. Move the rock so you can see what it shines, why it shines, ordered the emperor. The lizard did what the emperor had commanded. She returned to where the rock lay and tried to move it. She tried to push it with her two front legs and then with, it, with her two hind legs, but the rock did not move. At last, the lizard pushed the rock with her whole body, but the rock would not burge. There was nothing left, left for the lizard to do but to go back to the city. She crossed one of the wide bridges, passed by the marketplace, arrived at the Grand Palace, and went, and went straight to see the emperor. She found him sitting on the same throne, surrounded by the smoke of the torches. I'm very sorry, said. Sir, she said, I did everything I could, but I could not move the rock. The emperor wanted very much to see this glowing rock, so he decided to go back with the lizard. But first, he called for the woodpecker. I want you to come with us, the emperor said to the woodpecker. And so that three of them, the emperor, the lizard, and the woodpecker went to see the glowing rock. When they reached the, the rock, the emperor said to the woodpecker, I want you to hit that, hit that rock hard with your beak. The woodpecker obeyed the emperor. He gave the rock a sharp peck with his strong beak, and the rock a split open, and inside the rock was the sun, all curled up and fast asleep. The emperor was very happy to see the sun again. The, the world had been very cold and dark without him. Wake him up, woodpecker, ordered the emperor. And the woodpecker pecked several times on the rock. Tuck, tuck, tuck when the woodpecker's beak and its trunk struck the hard rock. The sun opened one eye, but he immediately closed it again and went right on sleeping. Wake up, sun, said the lizard. All of the animals have been looking for you. But the sun did not answer. He just stretched a bit and went on sleeping. Wake up, son, said the woodpecker. All of the birds have been waiting for you. But the son John, an enormous John, and kept on sleeping. Get up, son, said the emperor. The entire city needs you. But the son just said, leave me in peace. I want to sleep. The emperor knew that he had to do something. Without the sun, the plants could not grow, and his people would not have any food to eat. 
Without the sun, the children could not go out to play. The birds could not come out to sing, and the flowers would not bloom. So the emperor said to the sun, Wouldn't you like to see some beautiful dances? I will ask the finest musicians and dancers to play and dance for you. That will wake you up. Well, if you want me to wake up, ask them to start playing their liveliest music and to keep right on playing and dancing, answered the sun. So the emperor called for the finest dancers and musicians, the dancers, all adorned with beautiful feathers of many colors, danced in the plaza in front of the highest pyramid. The loud, joyful music played on and on, and the sun woke up, climbed to the highest point in the sky, and shone down over everyone, lighting the whole earth. The emperor called for the emerald color lizard. He put her on the palm of his hand and thanked her for having helped to find the sun. Then he called for the red-breasted woodpecker. He asked him to stand on his shoulder and thank him for having helped to wake up the sun. Every year from then on, the emperor organized a great feast with joyful music and beautiful dances, so that the sun will never again fall asleep, hidden away from inside a rock. And since that day, all lizards love to lie in the sun. They like to remember the day when one of their own found the sun, hidden place and help bring him back to give light and warmth to everyone the end i hope you guys enjoyed this book thank you for watching and listening and please don't forget to give me thumbs up share this video and subscribe to my channel thank you god bless you